What's going on all of my healthcare brothers and sisters? I hope that you are having a wonderful day. This is honestly one of the most highly requested series that I've had after I created the highly viewed BLS, ACLS, and PALS videos to help you pass your exams. Well, great, you've passed your exams, but how do I pass that mega code piece? So that is what we we're gonna be doing today. We we're gonna be starting out with the adult one West skewer BLS mega code. Let's get started. The following is a scenario that can be used when you're looking at adult one rescuer BLS. So here's your scenario. You are a bystander who witnessed an adult collapse. The person is unresponsive and not breathing. What are you going to do next? Are you going to number one, initiate cardiopulmonary resuscitation, also known as CPR. Two, check for responsiveness. Three, check for scene safety or four, leave the person and just come back later. <laughs> well, we can automatically eliminate number four because we never wanna leave somebody who has potentially experienced a cardiac arrest. So it's either between checking scene safety, checking for responsiveness, or performing CPR. The first thing that you always wanna do in BLS is assess your environment and assess your patient. Those are the first things you wanna do before you ever put hands on somebody, okay? So number one, check your scene safety. Number two, check your patient. Look around, make sure you're not in the middle of the street, in the middle of a pool, you can't perform effective CPR there, right? So for this particular scenario, when you were asked this question, the correct answer is going to be number three, you're going to check for scene safety. As discussed before, you're going to want to follow these particular steps in order to complete your victim assessment. Number one is you want to check for scene safety. Is the scene safe? Am I in the middle of the street or am I in the middle of a body of water? If you are, then get the person out of there. You're not going to be effectively saving anybody who is in those particular scenarios. Number two, you wanna check for responsiveness and you're gonna do this by tapping on their shoulders and shouting, are you okay? If they don't respond to you, then you're gonna to wanna to move on to the next step which is activating the emergency response system and calling for help. If you're with someone and they are able to, have them go and look for an AED and call 911. However, if you're by yourself, you can perform a round of CPR and then call for help to obtain the AED. The next step that you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to check for breathing and visible chest rise, okay? You wanna see, is this person actually breathing or not? Don't spend a whole lot of time on this though. And then lastly, you're gonna check for a pulse. You're gonna place your fingers on the inside of the patient's neck, just below the jawline, to feel for that carotid pulse. Don't check for breathing or pulse for more than 10 seconds. Do them consecutively, and if you don't see them, then we are going to move on to our next step. So now we have come to the part of the scenario where we have found that the patient is unresponsive, they have no pulse, and they're not breathing. What is your next action? What are you going to do? Are you going to, number one, initiate cardiopulmonary resuscitation, that's also known as CPR? Are you gonna wait for the AED arrive? Are you gonna start rescue breaths? Or are you gonna leave the person and come back later? There's always gonna be one that doesn't make sense. So number four, obviously we're not gonna leave the person and come back later. Per our victim assessment, we have checked for scene safety and we have also checked for the patient and done our assessment. So the next thing that we need to do because we have no pulse and we have no breathing is we want to initiate CPR. We're gonna start our interventions at this point. So the very first thing that you want to do is start your chest compressions. That means hands are going to be placed on the lower half of the sternum and we're going to do 30 compressions at a rate of 100 to 120 compressions per minute. For an adult, the compressions must be at least 2 inches or 5 centimeters and you want to allow for complete chest recoil after each compression. So as you can see from the image over here, this person is allowing their hands to come all the way up so that their chest can re-expand before they push back down for their chest compressions. You also want to provide rescue breaths. 
We're gonna give two breaths with a barrier device after each round of CPR. And I'm saying that because as we know, COVID-19 is upon us and it is the recommendation of the American Heart Association that you have a barrier device available if you are going to provide rescue breaths. Each breath should be given over one second and you should see that visible chest rise and fall with each breath. Resume compressions in less than 10 seconds. Remember, 30 chest compressions to two rescue breaths. So the most important thing to know is that you wanna perform at least five rounds of high quality CPR or two minutes before you do a pulse check. However, when it comes to the AED, you wanna put that on immediately. That does not change your time. So once the AED arrives to your location, you want to do number one, turn on the AED and follow the prompts. Before you do anything else to that person, you wanna turn on that machine. Next, you wanna correctly attach the pads and plug in the connector. Usually on top of the pads, there's usually an indication about where they are supposed to go. One usually goes above the left chest and the other one goes on the right side in the mid axillary line to kind of sandwich the heart. Number three, you want to clear the AED analysis, right? So you want to get everybody off that patient or that potential victim and stop your chest compressions. Once they're all off, you want to call out stand clear and allow that AED to analyze what is happening with that person. You want to push the analyze button and allow time for the analysis. Once it has analyzed the patient's heart rhythm, it is either going to tell you to deliver a shock or not deliver a shock. If it does state to deliver a shock, again, you wanna make sure that everybody is clear off of that patient. Nobody should be touching that person, right? Once everybody's clear, you're going to again call all clear, stand clear, whatever it is, so that way everybody's on the same page. You're going to hit that shock button immediately, allow the shock to go into the patient, and then immediately resume CPR. Do not check for a pulse. I know a lot of people have reached out and said, I need to check for a pulse immediately afterwards. No, that is not the American Heart Association guidelines. You are going to perform another five rounds of high quality CPR or two minutes before you do your next pulse check. So after that shock is delivered, what are you going to do next? We've already talked about this. We are going to resume CPR. It is very important that that is resumed immediately after a shock is delivered. Once that shock is delivered, your scenario has been concluded. I hope this video was helpful in understanding how to pass your adult one rescuer mega code for the American Heart Association. If you have any additional questions, make sure that you leave them down below. I love answering your questions. Make sure you go over to www.nursechung.com where we have a ton of resources regarding the actual exam as well as the mega code to help you pass the first time. And as always, I will see you in our next video. Bye.